the quality of your leads is where you're really going to get the most juice, right? So if we talk about where those leads are coming from, that's where it's really going to matter. Regardless of whether you're getting your lead from your referrals or from relationships that you're building, those are going to be your highest quality leads. And those are the ones where you're going to close more of them. Welcome, everybody, to the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Coming at you live here, Dorn Aldana with the one and only Penny Rightly, very special guest expert. And not only is this our inaugural live with our podcast, with our new and definitely the dust on top of outstanding faculty member, Penny Rightly, but we get to do it on a topic that is always perennially applicable, valuable, especially in the market we're facing right now, where leads are definitely harder to come by than they used to be. We want to make sure we make the most of every single lead that comes your way. And Penny Rightly happens to be an absolute expert when it comes to lead conversion. In fact, on Planet Prosper at MortgageMarketingCoach.com, she is our brand spanking new, just landed on Planet Prosper as a faculty member, although was a student on Planet Prosper. So she's not new to Planet Prosper way back in 2018. So she's been with us for a while and has been an amazing success story. I don't want to steal her thunder with her introduction and all that, but all that to say, not new to Planet Prosper, but new to our faculty team as conversion coach, chief conversion coach. So all things converting more leads into more closings. And today we're going to talk about her wheelhouse, how to close more leads into closings from less leads, how to get more closings from less leads. How's that for an amazing sandwich of terms, right? More closings, less leads. What happens when you get more leads? That means more earnings, more juice from less squeeze. And that's what we're all about here on Planet Prosper. More juice, less squeeze. So that being said, Penny, I'm super excited to rock this with you. This is going to be fun. Awesome. Thank you so much for having me, Norm. I'm super excited to be here. Well, I'm beyond blessed to have you on the team. I mean, it's like a really an incredible divine gift to have uh, not only a student who's done exceedingly well showing up coachable and committed and being the poster child for what it looks like to really empty her cup so we could fill it with her dream. That was uh, an amazing gift just to see you soar as the eagle that you are using the tools, the systems, and the coaching we provided you and igniting your business at a whole other level. That was beautiful and delightful and so gratifying to me personally. And then to have the ability to now have you not just be the hero, but make heroes and for us to lock arms and to be on a team together to reach more people, help more people and help people live their blessed life, their best life. Like I'm pinch me right now. I'm it's like, seriously, this is just so exciting to have you on the team. And already you're making everything we do better. You're a magnifier. Everything you, when you bring who you are, your leadership, your influence, whether it be with clientele or whether it be your, with your teammates and your, you know, uh, your, your fellow soldiers going out there on the front lines to fulfill a mission, to impact people, you make the whole team better. And so uh, you are definitely a magnifier and a value creator. I just want to honor you for that right out the gate. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here. I absolutely love what I'm doing. Um, I just, I really love serving the mortgage community. Um, I've had so much fun with everything that I've been doing thus far, and I just can't wait to do more of it. I absolutely, I'm so excited. I'm so excited to be here. And I love meeting all the people that I'm meeting, all of the mortgage pros that I've met so far. I can't wait to meet more. Super excited. Well, for those who haven't been blessed to meet you yet, let's give them a little introduction. I know you've got a deep a resume. Uh, so, you know, we, we could be here all day with all the accolades and recognition and rewards and achievements and all the amazing feats you've had over the long tenure that you've had on, on the front lines of capitalism as a mortgage professional and all the different roles you've been in too. But maybe just give people the Coles Notes version, uh, the, down, the quick download as to your background, um, and, uh, what inspired you to step into this new adventure in your career, shifting from doing the business to now coaching and helping other people really ignite in their business? For sure. 
So, um, so I've been in the business for a whopping 24 years uh, in the mortgage business. I'm Dr. Really, just like me. <laughs> <laughs> I originally started in the lending side of the business many, many moons ago working uh, for a finance company, uh, um, which later transferred into working uh, in the broker side of the business. I started out working as an administrator for a broker. I later became a mortgage agent here in Ontario, uh, which later transferred into me becoming a mortgage broker and then eventually a principal broker as well. And then later on became a mentor as well. So became mentoring uh, mortgage brokers as well. Uh, we started out at one point with one office when I was a principal broker. We grew that to three offices in our first year. And then eventually, um, at one point, I, I took on a partner as well. We grew that, um, I had, I think, seven offices at that point. And then we grew it to 14 offices as a team. Um, Amazing. So it really expanded. Um, we grew to about $250 million in production uh, as a team. And uh, we had a lot of fun doing it for sure. Um, and now I have the opportunity to, uh, to do some coaching and, uh, and share all of the things I've learned over the years. I have done everything from residential to industrial to commercial, um, and everything in between private mortgages as well. Uh, so I've had a little taste of everything over the years, literally thousands of mortgages, thousands of families that I've helped over the years. It's been a really fun ride. So it's really nice to be able to share the things that I've learned over the years um, and all of the different families that I've helped, businesses, um, investors, et cetera. So it's just really nice to be able to share the things that I've learned and be able to help the next generation of mortgage pros and help them take it to the next level. So that's really what powers me and tells me to want to move forward uh, today, right, is to just be able to help others and, and share the things that I've learned. Uh, to be able to help them, you know, share what they know too. So, yeah. Well, people are going to definitely be in for a treat today and every other download we do together in tandem in the future because you have a wealth of knowledge and expertise that, you know, has been hard fought. You know, lots of battles you've fought along the way over 24 years. That's nothing to sneeze at. And as they say, success is when preparation meets opportunity. You've paid that price of preparation in spades. And so we get now, as a team to uh, to take the collective almost 50 years worth of experience that you and I have together, not including our other faculty members, like Coach Pete also has over two decades. So we're like, you know, we're getting, a, we're getting into some insane amount of numbers in terms of how much time we've spent on the front lines, coaching, training, and doing the do of being in the mortgage space. And I want to uh, just shift gears now and talk about lead conversion because this is one of the areas that you have a, a very uh adept expertise in because you've been doing it for so long because of, out of necessity right you pay good money for leads you work hard for these leads you develop partnerships and relationships that took a lot of sowing and a lot of tilling and a lot of water watering and fertilizing to cultivate those partnerships from which those leads came you did great work for your clientele you delivered a five-star experience and you had to dig deep in many cases to turn uh, what could have been a train wreck situation into a happy client such that you could convert that client into repeat and referral business. In any case, those leads were hard fought, right? Why is lead conversion such an important thing for mortgage professionals to really not just like consider as an optional thing that they should maybe get around to getting sharper at, but why is it something they really should be committing to as something to build mastery muscle around? And what difference does it make? Like there's the obvious they make more money and there's the obvious that they would be able to get a higher ROI on their time and their money if they're doing any paid advertising. But expand our mind for a moment for perhaps someone who's new to the business and doesn't really fully appreciate why lead conversion skills are so mission critical because maybe they're scraping the bottom of the barrel already and they don't even have any leads. They're like, why would I need to learn how to convert leads when I don't have any leads? I need to focus on lead gen first before I get to lead conversion. Give them a higher scope of vision as to both for the newbie and the veteran why lead conversion is so mission critical. 
Um, great question. I think one of the biggest things when I think about lead conversion is that when you get a lead, first off, we have to work really hard to get the leads in the first place, right? Mm -hmm. Let's work me into our business. We put our heart and soul into it. And when I think about converting a lead, I'm thinking about like a steam engine. I like to think about our business like it's a steam engine. And so when we start putting in the blood, sweat and tears into our business, it's like initially, you know, if we're brand new in the business, you know, you're putting that energy in and it seems like a really slow grind initially, right? And the lead conversion is no different, right? It's that slow grind, that slow burn initially. But the more you do it, right, the more you're converting those leads, eventually those leads start turning into referrals. And then those leads start turning into deeper relationships. And then it starts turning into other things. And eventually that steam engine of those leads that are converting starts chugging and chugging and chugging and chugging. And eventually <laughs> it goes faster and faster, right? And so eventually it becomes easier. And then eventually it becomes like a freight train that just won't stop. Right? Mm, yes. So, you know, it's, it's so, it becomes easier over time. So you work really hard to generate the lead in the first place. But then when you convert the lead, that's even better. It becomes like the icing on the cake. And then you do it again, 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 again. And eventually, yes. you don't have to work so hard to get the leads. You don't have to work so hard to convert them. You know, it becomes easier and easier over time. So I think that's what's so important about the conversion of the lead, right? Um, yes, absolutely. We have to generate the leads, definitely. But converting them, keeping them, nurturing them, that's what's really super important. Yeah, that's interesting. You know, we've heard the saying, not all leads are created equal. But it's not just about the quality of the lead. It's the quality of the process we take the lead through that determines how much juice we can squeeze from the same number of leads, right? You're getting the same number of leads regardless in terms of what you're already doing. But what if we could 2x, 3x, 4x, 5x your conversion? That's yeah. a game changer. Like you said, yeah. it's not just about the commission you're making off that one transaction. It's the repeat business. It's the referral business. It's the rave reviews and the, and the business you get from that five-star reputation. It's yeah. the reputation you build, not just with your clients, but also your partners, and next thing you know, your partner, instead of just, you know, treating you as the last resort loan officer, right? Or it's like, oh, we got this one that's got fangs and hair. Let's send it to Susie. No, now Susie's getting all the business all the time because Susie's showing up as a superstar. And yes. the realtor, is like, why would I sell it for second best when I can rock it with superstar Susie all day, every day, right? Okay. And then you get, so then you literally go from, you know, once in a blue moon referral relationship to getting one, two, three deals a month relationship. That's a game changer. Right. Not to mention, now you got that momentum. And once Big Mo comes to town, you never want Big Mo to leave, right? That momentum. Right. And then, like you said, it's like you're an Amtrak train with no brakes and no gears. It's like nothing's stopping you, right? Once momentum comes, you want to nurture it, you want to protect it. But to get to momentum, we need to get to maximize the lead conversion. We cannot get to momentum. Well, Big Mo will not come to town if you have not tracked the code on lead conversion. Let's just be real. So this is a mission critical must if you want momentum. And if you have momentum, we need to maximize. We need systems to keep lead conversion optimal. Otherwise, we will be prone to lose momentum because this is really like this is the piston that drives the whole engine. Lead generation and lead conversion. You can't have a thriving business without both. That's right. So I think we've kind of beaten that dead horse. I think people have a pretty, not, pretty good height and appreciation for why lead conversion is so important. That's why they're listening and tuning in. Let's talk now about the three secrets, the secret sauce. We, we could probably cover 30 if we really had sufficient time to do so. We could do a full boot camp over two days, and we could probably unpack 30 little hinges that swing open big doors to big breakthroughs when it comes to lead conversion. But for the sake of time, we're going to talk about the big three, yes. the big three that are the biggest game changers that every mortgage pro needs to know when it comes to maximizing their lead conversion, more leads or rather more closings with less leads 
means now you feed more raw material at the top of your funnel. You're going to have more gold nuggets at the bottom of the funnel with more zeros and commas in your bank account. So let's dive in, shall we? What's the first of the three? Let's go. First of the three is your quality of leads. The quality of your leads is where you're really going to get the most juice, right? So if we talk about where those leads are coming from, that's where it's really going to matter, right? So if you are focusing mostly, so regardless of whether you're getting um, you know, your lead from um, your referrals or uh, from relationships that you're building, the, those are going to be your highest quality leads. And those are the ones where you're going to close more of them. So if you're not getting as many leads, that's okay, right? Online leads, you could maybe get a hundred online leads. You might be lucky to close four or five of them. But if you but you like you're holding one or two, oftentimes. That's right. But if you're getting leads from referral partners or from existing relationships that you have, chances are those five leads are probably going to close. You're going to close four out of five of them, right? Maybe one doesn't qualify, but chances are four out of five of those are going to close, right? So you're For gonna sure. Close there. So that honestly, that is probably like. The number, number one, absolutely, right, is your quality you lead. Really focus down and really hone in on that high quality lead. It doesn't matter how many leads you get, right? You're going to close way more of them, way better yeah, closing. Huge point. Yeah. And what's interesting about that, Penny, is that a lot of people, they'll spend all this time, energy, and effort honing their follow up campaigns and, you know, getting the right messaging and, Setting, getting in the right branding and having really cool kick-ass emails and text messages and all that stuff is great. I'm not saying that's bad. But if you're feeding the funnel with a bunch of crap leads off the internet, it's like putting lipstick on a pig. At the end of the day, it's still a pig, right? You're not going to improve your conversions very much. It's such a minuscule amount. It's way too much squeeze with not enough juice if the, all you're doing is doing that. It's like you're putting a Band-Aid on it when you need surgery. It's not going to help you much, right? So surgery looks like, how can I improve the quality of my lead flow? And we could even go even more micro, even more of a deeper dive into looking at your referral sources. And oftentimes people will say, well, you know, I'm getting all these leads from my realtors. I'm getting referrals, but they're still not converting. And the biggest question I'd ask is, tell me about your referral partners. These realtors you're working with, are they the top dogs or are they the me mediocre middle and the struggle bunnies? Yes. And nine times out of 10, they swell, they're the mediocre middle. They're maybe doing you know, a deal a month, if that. Maybe a deal every second month. They're the part-timers. Those are the ones that are getting chewed up and spat out right now over the last two and a half years of having rates go up and low inventory. And then, of course, in the States, we have NAR coming in in just a few days, August 17th, the, the NAR settlement new uh, rules around buyer uh, agency commissions is enacting. So that's another like massive shit storm that is causing a huge upheaval in the real estate space. So they're dropping like flies even more and more. So if you're hitching your wagon with the mediocre middle, don't be surprised if your income tanks even more. Don't be surprised if your lead flow tanks even more. Don't be surprised if they're in desperation and sending you desperation leads even more because that's not a high quality source of referrals, especially when it comes to quantity and consistency, right? So that's why here on Planet Prosper, we're all about going after the top dogs, but it's not about chasing, it's about attracting. Yeah. It's not about being a lone legion, a mortgage parasite and banging down their door, trying to get from them. It's about positioning yourself so you're the welcome guest versus the annoying pest and becoming irreplaceable, indispensable as an asset on their team where they need you more than you need them, <laughs> right? It changes everything. And then notice the quality of the lead flow. Chances are the average commission per deal from a top producing realtor who exercised more leadership, more iron-fisted control over the, the, the whole transaction and leading the client through the transaction because they understand how mission critical it is to give proper and strong leadership to their client to avoid them stepping into the ditch or stepping on landmines or just the stinking thinking that comes with lack of leadership and all the train wrecks that come with that. They understand that. They're more cognizant of that. They understand how important it is to lead the client versus the client leading them such that the client is a better quality client. If they say jump, the client says how high, right? 
Yeah. And then they're also not only pre-sold on you before they even talk to you, if the realtor has done their endorsement and their edification uh, properly, right? Saying, hey, Penny Riley, she's my go-to. She's the one you need to talk to. I don't care if you got a pre-approval. You need to get a pre-approval through Penny because that way we know that you've got rock solid financing. You can choose who, whoever you want to choose after you get with Penny, but I promise you, once you get a taste of great, you're not going to want to sell it for good. So get with Penny. Notice the strong endorsement. Top producers are more likely to already have a default setting to do that. Low producers, not so much. Have you found that to be true? I have. A thousand percent I have. Yeah. Yeah. I've had conversations like that even today, in fact. So right? there we go. <laughs> exactly. And then they, the quality is so much better. They're more committed. They have more financial wherewithal. They got their financial ducks in a row. They're more affluent, bigger transaction sizes, bigger commissions uh, for you in terms of average commission per deal. Like every, And then they have friends and family that are in the same ballpark. You know, birds of a feather flock together, right? That's so it's like, why would we settle for the struggle bunnies when we can start attracting the top dogs? Well, most of us don't know how to do that. That's why people hire us to learn, track the code on how to do that. We'll talk about that in a moment. But so just to emphasize, don't skip over, don't glaze your eyes and roll your eyes and be like, oh yeah, better quality lead, yeah. No, that, that really is like, that is the meat and potatoes of improving your lead conversion. That will outperform anything else we talk about. Yes. But it's also the most challenging because you have to figure out how to crack the code on getting better quality partners and crack the code on cultivating more relationship with your clients versus dropping like a, uh, dropping them like a hot potato and just saying, Hey, if anyone comes to mind, let me know if you want to refer anyone. That's not how you get referrals. So we're going to talk about that. Let's unpack a little bit more. I don't want to steal your thunder. So we've covered the first secret. What's the second secret? Sure. Second secret is your follow-up. So your follow-up is huge because we know that the money, big riches is all in your follow-up, right? When you the better off your paycheck is going to be at the end of the day, right? So absolutely, fortune is in the follow-up. Right. And honestly, the big hint here is uh, use systems. Have a good CRM. Honestly, that has been the secret to everything uh, that has grown my business over the years is having a CRM because I can't do everything myself. As much as you know, I like to say I'm superwoman. Sometimes um, I can't do everything myself, so you know, employ systems to help you do some of the follow-up for sure. But in following up with those leads and staying on top of those leads, that is really what's going to propel um, you to that next level as well. So stay on top of those leads when you do get them. So tell us about that. Like what are the top one, two or three most effective strategies for the follow-up? I mean, we can send smoke signals. We can send something by direct mail. You know, we can send a card in the mail. Uh, we can message them on social media. We can friend them on social media. We can text them. We can email them. Uh, there's just a million and one ways we can do follow up. What are the most effective ways? Because obviously, there's a big difference between activity and productivity, right? There's a big difference between splashing around in the ocean, just making a much bunch of noise and uh, a bunch of activity splashing, versus paddling powerfully towards Paradise Island. So what does it look like to, pow to paddle powerfully when it comes to follow-up? Definitely. Um, so nothing beats good old telephone, for sure. Telephone is always a great way to follow up with people. Um, I think that it is one of the things that people seem to be very afraid to just pick up the phone and call someone. Um, not really sure why that seems to be the thing these days, but definitely just pick up the phone and calling. Uh, can definitely be a great way to follow up with people. Um, another great thing that I absolutely love to do, if you're not picking up the phone, leave a um, uh, like a voice message, right? So mm -hmm. I have an iPhone, and you can just leave somebody a voice message, right? It's mm -hmm. a fantastic way to make a connection with someone without feeling like you're bothering or disturbing them at a, you know an ungodly hour or something. You can just simply leave them a quick little voice note, it's a great way to reach out to them. Um, you mean like a voicemail or a voice text? Like a, so just a, like an audio recording, right? So you make an audio recording and you can send it to them via SMS text or, or you can also do it through Instagram or Facebook 
or however right. you have made an initial contact with that client, right? So right. if you've done it, a phone call initially with them, then you've got their cell phone number so you could send them a voice note through text, right? Um, I find that that is a great way to make connections with people. It is something where you're not feeling invasive with, you know, contacting them. Maybe they're at work when you're trying to reach them. Um, so it's very similar to leaving a voicemail, except you're not actually calling, you know, in the middle of their work day. You're just leaving a voice note. They'll listen to it when they have time and they'll respond to it when they have time. Every time I leave someone a voice note, they always respond, whether they respond with a voice note or they just text me back or sometimes they'll call me back. Doesn't matter. I always get a response from it. So that tends to work really, really well. Um, that is probably my number one way I would say. Telephone call is probably number two because for some reason, no one likes to pick up the phone and actually call. Um, <laughs> True story. And, uh, number three, I would say is text message. Of course, text messages are great. No one checks their email, at, but emails number four. Um, you know, emails number four, it's kind of last on the list, I would say, but it is still applicable in the business world. Um, email is going to get used mostly for document collection and things like that. But certainly if you're just trying to reach someone, last ditch effort can be through email. But uh, certainly some of the other, you know, techie ways to reach people, I would definitely say would be, you know, those voice notes, text messages. Um, they tend to be some of the best ways to do your follow-ups and, and reaching out to people. And then obviously putting people on your email drip campaigns and things like that over time too. Honestly, any way that you can kind of come at someone to uh, to follow up with them is always good um, because people respond in different ways, right? Um, what works for one person might not work for another. So it doesn't hurt to kind of come from all different angles, but you will find with maybe most of your clients, at least with most of the clients I've worked with um, and in the age demographics that I work with, like the home buying age and the people that are moving up, the investors, et cetera, that type of age demographic of people um, with young families and things like that tend to be people that are very responsive with text messages, voice notes, that type of thing. So they tend For to sure. get in response. But every now and then they'll actually respond to an email too. I love it. So voice memos, voice text rather, mm -hmm. telephone, if we can get them on the phone. Not easy to do nowadays, but once in a while we can thread the needle on that, especially if they've been endorsed to you through a top producing realtor and they have, you know, touted you as the go-to and you no, know, you basically can walk on water. That's how awesome you are in their eyes, right? So the power of that endorsement. And then, uh, of course, we got the other things, text message, email, and the like. Now, if you're doing all this manually, you're obviously doing it the hard way. So we're going to need technology to automate a lot, uh, a lot of that process. I heard recently on a podcast, and I thought it was brilliant, and it's very, very true, that uh, complication, like anything that is convoluted or complicated, is death rattle to momentum. Yes. So, which means that simplicity is lifeblood and is gasoline on the fire for momentum, simplicity. So you want to think about a technology that way that it's not there to complicate your life. Some of you guys, you break into hives at the mere thought of technology and CRMs. You used to get sweaty palms and your heart starts beating out of your chest just thinking about techie stuff because it's scary. But the great thing is there's people that are really great at techie stuff. So where you're weak, someone else is unique. So you don't have to be stuck in feeling powerless in your area of weakness, just delegated to someone who has that as their strength. So you can dance in your strengths by getting them to dance in their strengths. You do what you do best, as we like to say, and you get the best to do all the rest. That's the key to unlocking your greatness in your zone of genius. So technology is a big part of this, obviously, because you don't want to have to have all this being based on your whim and memory and motivation. That's a lot of complication and a lot of breakpoints, right? There's a lot of points that of breakage where you don't, you're not in the mood or you want to go on vacation or you want to take a day off or you want to spend time with the family or you want to be at the ball game instead of messing around with doing all this follow-up stuff. And at the end of the day, why did we get in the business to begin with? To be under a mountain of to-dos? No, to get freedom, autonomy, independence, right? So that means we need systems. And if you think about system a great acronym for that is save yourself time, energy, money, and stress systems, right? 
Love it. You want to build a systems-based business, not a you-based business. So that's going to be the simplicity you get. Yes, there might be some complication on the route to put those pieces of the puzzle in place with the text follow-up campaign, with the you know, knowing what to say with your voice. But like there's some things you're going to need to iron out initially, like just like trying to get a 747 off the runway. You burn up most of your fuel just getting it off the runway, getting a rocket into orbit. Most of the fuel is just burnt up, getting it into orbit, propelling it off the landing pad. Same thing here. It's a lot of work. Let's be real. You got to put a lot of work up front to build the systems, to get the text messaging campaign set up, to hire a virtual assistant, for example, with a matrix of like what to send out as follow-up to these people. Uh, if they don't respond, what are they going to send? If they have a question, what's the FAQs? Like that takes time to lay that foundation. Now, of course, that's one of the benefits of investing in a program like what we bring to the table where you don't have to reinvent the wheel. There's a lot of these FAQs, a lot of these plug and play campaigns, text message campaigns to your pre-approvals, by the way. Like if you really want to make uh, your conversion rate on your pre-approval soar, send a text message every Friday. Not a message like, hey, go and find a home. That's probably not going to work. But like, how are you leading them? How are you adding value? How are you helping them find their dream home with less time, energy, and effort? And effort? How are you helping them win the deal? How are you helping them get under contract? What are you doing to lead them through that process? That's what your text messages should be looking like. They should be short and punchy. If you don't have to mess with it, we do it for you as part of our concierge service. But the bottom line is you need systems and ideally some plug and play type of content. Now, the problem with the pre-approval campaign is you can't like borrow what would work a year ago and think that's going to work today. It always has to be timely and fresh. It's like, what the, what's the difference between garbage and 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 uh, salad timing, right? You leave it too late, it turns to garbage. So same thing here. You need timely information. That sort of thing you can outsource to experts like us if you don't want to mess with it. But you need to have a CRM to be able to do the broadcast text. You need to. You don't want to be doing it one at a time. That's way too much work. That's like using a shovel when there's an excavator. That's doing it the hard way, right? So all that to be said. You definitely want to be using text message. I love the voicemail idea. Now, keep in mind with voicemail, you've got to be cognizant of your energy. If you sell like this, hi, this is Barnell Dana from ABC Mortgage. Uh, I understand you're looking for a mortgage. Um, I'm here to uh, help uh, with any of your mortgage questions. Uh, feel free to call me back uh, if, you know, when it's convenient to you. My number is obviously that's not inspiring, right? Like people, are, you're not going to convert leads like that, right? I One of the reasons <laughs> I'm just, you know, doing that enactment and uh, I'm already tired. So I've got to be careful not to do that enactment too much, right? But uh, that's over 40, right? I need my cat nap. We'll do that later. So, but the reason why it works for Penny is her vibrant personality, her, her energy. It's that sparkle in her eye, right? It comes through through audio. She, they can feel it. And it's like, it calls them into, I want to be led by you. I can trust you. So that's the biggest thing is we're here to, we need follow up that builds trust. What are you doing to build trust? Is your communication building trust? Is your, do you have testimonials that build trust? Are your partners endorsing you emphatically to build baked in trust in advance? Are you using testimonials and rave reviews as part of your funnel to build trust? Is your communication building trust? Is it building authority? If it's not, that's what you need to work on. So back to you, Penny. What's the next one? <laughs> the next one, and it's, it's also a really big one too, is asking for the referral. Oh my gosh, this one I can't want to think about. Most of the time, we're not getting referrals because we're simply not asking for them. So many times we're just not asking for the referral. And I'm guilty of myself too. If I don't ask a client for a referral, I won't get one. And it's not because they don't think I've done a great job or that they don't want to give me the five-star review. It's just simply because I didn't ask them, right? They're like, oh, I didn't know that you were taking on more clients or, oh, I didn't know you wanted a referral, right? And so if we're not asking for it, we're not going to receive, right? Ask and you shall receive. And that is just the rule of the game, right? So if you have less leads, that's not always a bad thing. Just take the leads that you have 
and give them great, amazing, excellent service. And then when you're done giving them the great, amazing, excellent service, go and ask them for a referral and it's going to turn into more business for you. It's, it's so simple and yet it's something you just don't do in this business. I don't know why. We're all guilty of it. I've been horribly guilty of it myself, but I will tell you, it works wonders. Ask for the referrals. Yeah. And the- ask, you shall receive. I'm just my easy. Can you handle it? Right? How easy can you handle it? Okay. Uh, we think it's going to be hard, right? Because we're afraid of rejection. We're afraid of the awkwardness of like, oh, I don't want to ask. I don't want to be a pesky like salesperson, try to like manipulate people to send referrals. And if you feel that way, I might just invite you to consider what does that say about your own belief in your service and the value you provide? What does that say about uh, how replaceable you see yourself in your own eyes? Like if you use, if you see yourself as a replaceable commodity, why would you expect anyone else to think otherwise or any different, right? A big part of getting the high quality referrals and the high quality partnerships where you get the high quality leads that are pre-sold on you before they even talk to you such that you're converting like a hot knife through butter. You get 10 of them, you're converting eight of them. A big part of that is your belief in yourself that you're deserving and worthy of success, deserving and worthy of emphatic praise, deserving and worthy of being a top producer, deserving and worthy of being the go-to, of owning that authority, that expertise status in someone else's eyes. If you don't see it for yourself, why would anyone else see it? So that's why we say this business is like a personal development course with a compensation plan attached, right? The more you grow, the more your business grows. But it starts from the inside out. And there is no momentum on the outside with your lead conversion until there's momentum on the inside with your own self-belief that you're capable and worthy of having more business, converting at a higher level, having people see you as like the only logical choice. Like they wouldn't even consider working with anyone else. You're the dust on top of outstanding. When they get the taste of great, they're never going to want to sell for good. Like do you believe in yourself at that level? And if you don't, what's holding you back? What's there for you? What's the stinking thinking? Because until and unless you purge out that mind trash and enact that, what I call mindset enema, flush out all that crap that you're holding on to, that you're seeing yourself in a certain way that's holding you back from receiving success, you're never going to get to that next level. So a big part of that lead conversion is like, okay, what's keeping me from attracting those partners? What's keeping me from attracting those referrals? What's keeping me from asking for the referral? You know, one of the fastest, easiest ways to make it easy, breezy, lemon squeezy to ask for referrals to your happy clients is start to build a campaign and roll out a campaign where you identify who your clients, happy clients are. Not just the tepid lukewarmers, but I'm talking like the brand ambassadors, the evangelists, right? The ones that love you and sing your praises from the rooftops. Those who give you a gleaming, beaming five-star review on Google or wherever. That is the most fun conversation you'll ever have. Let's be real. You call them up and you thank them for the, re- the amazing review. You have a, just an emphatic, authentic, from the heart, gratitude for who they are and the delight of serving them. You say, hey, by the way, you I'm sure already know, but I don't want to just assume or presume uh, that you know that most of my business comes all through referral. So I don't have to be messing around chasing people around and doing all this fancy you know, advertising stuff. I can just focus on serving our clients. With that in mind, would you be open to having a brainstorm session to see who in your world we can help? See if we might be able to activate your mental Rolodex. Would you be open to having a quick brainstorming session? Notice how easy that is, right? Well, that, was easy. that was easy. It doesn't have to be any more complicated than that, <laughs> right? Why not just press the easy button? That was easy. Why, have, why does it have to be hard or complicated? It doesn't. But we overcomplicate things because we think that because success is so rare and very few people attain it, it must be complicated. No, it's hard, but it's not complicated. Mm-hmm. It's sophisticated, but it's not complicated. Mm-hmm. Notice the difference. It's sophisticated, but it's also elegant. It can be simple, elegant, and sophisticated. It doesn't have to be complicated and hard. No. It is hard from a standpoint of working hard. You do have to work hard, right? That's a given. But you can also work smart. And that's where having a proven system comes in. 
So yeah, asking for the referral. Notice that number one and number two are very similar, right? Better quality sources, better quality uh, leads that come from those sources. Biggest game changer when it comes to improving conversion. Well, no. Well, start well, the funnel, right? Absolutely. Better quality. Better stuff getting there, better stuff comes out, right? Bingo. Stop putting so much gravel at the top and start putting gold nuggets at the top, right? Stop putting so much chaff at the top and start putting kernels at the top. That's how you improve the conversion. Stop. Just have it be more refined right from the get-go, right from the top of the funnel. Let's talk about, before we sign off, because we're almost short on time here, last question. We ask for, for, for from clients, but uh, let's talk about getting referrals from partners because maybe someone already has partners. They're not getting all their business. Maybe they're having a hard time getting new partners and they're having a hard time even asking for the first date with a conversation because of maybe call reluctance or afraid of, of failure or afraid of rejection. Can you speak to the biggest game changer you'd recommend for someone like that who just needs to get past their own inner blocks around how they can start asking for more business from the realtors they have and or getting new realtor partners. For sure. So I think, um, honestly, one of the biggest game changers for me with building relationships with referral partners is when you have existing referral partners, you want to really keep that relationship strong. So you always want to be um, adding value for your existing referral partners, right? One of the um, mistakes that I've made in the past was, you know, you get so excited because, yeah, you know, I've landed this referral partner. This is great. We've got this relationship. And then it kind of fizzles because you're not maintaining that relationship, right? Um, and, I, and so I think that that can be kind of where things can fall off the wagon. And so I think what's important is that you're always keeping in touch, right? You're always building upon that relationship, finding new ways to add value to that relationship. Because the reality is, is, you know, if you're not calling your referral partners, I can guarantee you somebody else is, right? Yeah. And so it's pretty, right? And so it's really important that you're always doing something to add value for that referral partner and keeping in touch with them. I think that that is, is probably one of the most important things. The next thing, too, is that if you are doing something really phenomenal for your referral partners, um, they're going to love you. And if they love you, I will tell you, most of the referral partners that I've built relationships with have actually come as a result of uh, relationships that, you know, I had a relationship with a referral partner and I knocked their socks off so much that they they literally introduced me to my next referral partner. And right. They introduced me to my next referral partner. So it became less work. Again, it's that steam engine, right? So if you do really good work for your referral partners, they're going to introduce you to more, right? So again, it's about putting that work in and putting that effort in and adding that value to that relationship, right? And so if you already have an existing partner, that can be really important for you is to add that value um, because when you do, it's just going to multiply, right? And for someone, if they're new in the business and they are thinking about, you know, well, who am I going to call? I don't want to just randomly cold call someone. I don't want to be that lonely. I don't want to be that uncomfortable person. My suggestion, you know, is reach out to um, your circle of influence. Who are they working with? Or do you have a realtor you've used yourself with some of the house sales you've had? Reach out to them. You know them. Why wouldn't you call them, right? Call them. Say, hey, I'm building my loan business, right? Uh, you know, who do you who do you know? Can I call you? Or if you can't call them, who do you know that I could call? Who do you like to work with? Maybe I can call them, right? Um, that way, you're getting maybe some warm introductions, and you've got somewhere to start in the business, as opposed to just you know looking through the I want to say yellow pages. I'm dating myself here. Um, but, you know, yellow pages don't really exist these days, but. You know, as opposed to looking through the yellow pages or just Googling who works at the local Remax or Keller Williams office, right? You don't want to just be blindly picking somebody out of nowhere, right? It's really nice if you can have a warm introduction there. So if that's my advice. It's a lot easier to have a bit of a warm intro to someone when you're trying to build a relationship if you're going to start. There's certainly um, 
systems that we have that can help people really knock the doors off for sure uh, to really glow it up. But if you're going to do this one by one yourself, these are some great ways to do it, right? Is to uh, add that value um, and then, you know, depend, lean on your circle of influence. So it can go a long way. Beautiful. I know if we had more time, Penny, there would just be more and more downloads of awesome that we can continue to unleash. But we're up on time, unfortunately. But uh, hopefully people listening, watching this will not only know that there's some real gold here that's worthy of listening to maybe twice, maybe thrice to squeeze as, mo- uh, as much uh, you know, action items out of this uh, podcast episode as possible. Uh, if you don't do that, I highly recommend you do that just to listen to it multiple times because repetition is the mother of all learning, the father of all skill, the birthplace of all mastery. And if you want to make mastery money, freedom money, you need to put in the reps to build that mastery muscle. And so if you got value from this, just know we got a whole lot more in store. So stay tuned. If you've not yet subscribed to our Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast on Spotify or on iTunes or wherever you get your podcast, be sure to do that. If you feel like we're worthy of a five-star review, please and thank you. Uh, Your feedback means the world to us. It helps us reach more people, help more people. So thank you for being part of our community of brand ambassadors by giving us a five-star review, if indeed you feel inclined to do so. And uh, if you're watching this, you're like, Dorn, Penny, this is great. This is some great reminders. I kind of already knew this stuff, but it's just a healthy reminder. Uh, What I really need, Dorn and Penny, is like, can you just give me the paint by the numbers plug and play system for the text messages to go out, the messaging to go out to dead leads, the messaging to go out to pre-approvals, the messaging to go out for people when I first get the lead to get them on the phone to do that initially initial discovery call to get their application. Like I need all that stuff because I just, I'm not, I'm really good on the phone with these people, but I just don't, I'm not a wordsmith. I don't have the languaging and the cookie cutter crap I'm getting from my company is just not cutting it. If anything, it's turning people off because it's so snoring boring. Uh, I need something that's like really relational, that's connected, that positions me as a market leader. And if you've got some secret sauce, Dorn and Penny, that can allow me to attract the top dog realtors versus the bottom feeders and the struggle bunnies, I am all about it. If you've got some secret sauce that allows me to be the welcome guest instead of the annoying pest, I am all about it. If that's you and you have ambition, which means like you don't want to just a little have an itty bitty little uptick in your income. You want to you know, create a monumental breakthrough, like double, triple, quadruple, even quintuple your income. And to do that while working smarter, not harder, you're a residential mortgage pro in Canada and or the US. Well, not and or, but I guess if you have a second home uh, on the other side of the border, by all means, we'll work with that too. We'll get you getting a third home or a fourth home if that tickles your fancy. Hey, when you're making freedom money, you got lots of options, right? So giving your family the good life and be able to do that without even skipping a beat could give you some options such as that if that tickles your fancy. But the big idea here is we want to be able to give you uh, an opportunity to lift up the hood in your business and have an honest conversation about where you are, where you want to be. And if we can help you get there, by all means, we'll show you what that looks like. And if not, we'll recommend something else or someone else that's a better fit. But either way, our goal for you uh, by booking a call with us is to give you clarity and clarity that gives you power, power to make some powerful choices and power to propel your life, your business to the next level. Just like we did for Penny way back in 2018. It's like, man, light years ago now. And you know, she went stratospheric. Uh, we're going to have to do another podcast just to kind of unpack Penny's journey on Planet Prosper and the avalanches of awesome that unleashed from that. We don't have time today, but every single client that we've worked with that we've been able to double, triple, quadruple their income and get them making more money in one month they used to make in three, four, five, six months started with this honest conversation clarity call. We call it a breakthrough call. So if you're open to having that conversation to gain some clarity you've never had before and to explore whether or not we can help you and how we can help you, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. Very simple. Mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. Book a call and let's see what we can do to help you. And uh, again, just thank you, Penny, for the brilliant bright light that you are and uh, the value you bring. And thank you for uh, not just wanting to be the hero, but wanting to make heroes, not just achieving your dreams, but helping other people achieve their dreams and beyond blessed to have you on the team. So 
Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You. Thank you. So happy to be here. Thank you. All right, guys, that's all we got for today. We just covered the three secrets to closing more deals with less leads. And of course, we gave you some secret sauce in there as well on how to get better quality, better caliber leads so that you can close a whole lot more deals with a whole lot less time, energy, and effort. So again, if you're wanting to learn how to do that and how to win in any market, not just a fair weather market, book a call at mortgagemarketingcoach.com forward slash chat. Again, Dorn Aldana coming at you with the one and only Penny Rightly with the Art of Mortgage Marketing podcast. Thanks for hanging with us. Remember, don't just go to the next level. Let's grow to the next level. We'll see you soon.